Hello, you lovely people listening to the podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I am your host, Max Pez, senior level designer over at CD Project Red. But it's not just me. Instead, I'm joined by a fellow alumni, a guest reappearing out of the shadows, Mike G. Welcome, my friend. How are you doing? Uh, doing great. Dude. Doing fantastic. Uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> no, man, it's always a pleasure to have you back. And the first episode I really enjoyed, mate. So I'm really happy that we get to sit down again and, you know, talk more about level design. There's so much still to discuss, right? Oh, dude, there's, there is like, I think we could talk about it for a lifetime, man. It's, it's uh, a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. And sometimes I don't even think we'd even scratch half the surface with, with that lifetime for sure. Oh, yeah. And I, for those maybe who didn't listen to our first episode, mate, do you mind giving a, a brief introduction a bit about yourself, bud? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm a level designer originally from uh, Quebec, Canada, uh, so French Canadian over here. Uh, that's why I talk weird like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's that sexy been... accent, mate. This is how we get <laughs> people coming back for more. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, <laughs> And uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I'm originally from way up north Canada. I uh, moved, I slowly made my way down to Montreal. I worked there uh, at IDOS Montreal, Compulsion Games before that. Uh, so I shipped some, you know, my experience ranges from, uh, you know, AAA to indie. Uh, I worked uh, in New York a little bit at Define Studio, which is uh, sadly no more. But we worked on uh, Lords of the Fallen 2 there, which is kind of a uh, 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 Souls inspired game. Uh, it's a really good smash. one as well mate like really enjoyed that one the whole oh, Lords yeah. of the Fallen franchise man really good stuff but first let's have a quick word from today's sponsor <laughs> today's sponsor is none other than me what I've done everyone and I hope you're excited for this is I've actually created a level design kind of store what I've done in this store is put up different kinds of tips and tricks that you can find there, whether that be my actual ebook itself to that of level design pamphlets focused on different things such as traversal, stealth, breaking into the industry, as well as different talks that I have done which you cannot find anywhere else other than on this store. So if you are looking to improve on your level design skills, and processes then check out the level design store which will be down in the description below where there'll be a link to find this all you need to do is head over to gumroad.com forward slash level design lobby i hope you like what you see and i look forward to hearing your thoughts thank you and now back to the show all right that's what that was a blast to, to work on and um yeah, then uh, more recently, uh, Halo Infinite. So I'm, uh, I moved to the uh, the West Coast now. Uh, so uh, that's another, another good one, especially as a Halo fan growing up. I'm like super, super stoked to, to yeah, I got I got the chance to work on that. And uh, even more recently, I'm now at Riot Games working on Valorant. So multiplayer stuff now. Yeah, man, and congratulations again, mate, on the new position. You just must be over the moon for this. It's a... Uh... Great oh, yeah, position, dude. man. Great job, honestly. Congratulations <laughs> for all your hard work, man. Paying off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, and like, yeah, it's, it, it feels great. Just honestly, the, the team is just so like awesome and talented. People got great attitude there. I just, uh, mm. I love it every day. You know. Uh, yeah, man. I can I was, imagine. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was saying that back when when I started. You know, I had like uh, I just vividly remember being like, like coming out of a meeting and being like. Yeah, after work, you know, telling to my girlfriend, I was like, I had this awesome meeting today. It was amazing. <laughs> and she's like, wait, wait, wait what? It's like, an awesome meeting? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, it was great. It was so productive. We were talking about some, you know, just like the designers over there are just like, uh, so, just so talented. And it's, it's a real joy to work with them. Yeah. I can imagine. And I, I want to ask this question, mate, because Valorant obviously being a, a live game, having a competitive scene as well how does that i mean do you even notice or pay i mean i imagine you pay some attention with the feedback right online but yeah how does that does that change any of your design thoughts uh, or processes it does it does that's actually yeah uh, we're uh, so well, that's one big thing i write one of the you know like uh company like pillar like for their, their their big like culture thing over there it's like player first so that's like their number one like you know mantra 
and uh so they so we care a lot about like you know what needs to what change needs to be done for players to be happier and like just them feeling better about the game and stuff like that so uh yeah we actually we, we care a lot about that um it's not always possible to please everybody though but you know we <laughs> can you know it's like, uh, we we have like a researcher that's researchers are like that's they're doing that like all the time just collecting all this data basically doing like you know making sure that like the uh, players are, are are as happy as possible and uh yeah they're like oh so they but of course that doesn't mean like we it's, you know i it's, sometimes it's like a puzzle you can't please everybody but like you know yeah try to try to make them happy as much as possible yeah, and uh, yeah it's a it's a challenge but a good one yeah mate no it sounds great and i think obviously like having dedicated team members to find the information i'm sure yourself you can watch obviously so many streamers and the competitive scene uh, as well that must be you know yeah. incredible data to 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 have to like you said to make some influences on prioritizing what information you, you believe will have the biggest impact in in, in terms of players yeah, absolutely there's, there's wow. nothing like just like uh opening twitch and just watching watching shroud like playing one of the maps and you're like yeah he's just like you know he's doing shroud things he's popping off or whatever and, <laughs> and like you know he's just like kind of casually mentions thing oh this uh you know uh this part of the map is guy is so op man or that he says he just casually got trolls way like like just thoughts that just like in a roll out of his mind and you're like okay mm. that's good like pure raw like data there like you can you know it's like uh, let me look at that corner again you know you look at the yeah you know? <laughs> no so. and i the corner thing i think is a really interesting one to mention because the the design of valorant like i've only played a bit and i'm definitely not a professional <laughs> player by any means <laughs> but like it seems that the obviously having all these corners 90 degree angles really plays a, a big part in the the play style right of valorant and the yeah the, the levels i guess i'm wondering like how how do you value, I guess, or figure out either like what's a good turn point for the player and like versus trying to, I guess, how do you counterbalance that of uh, camping a certain corner as well? Uh, so in that kind of like, so it, it really depends, like a lot of these things like depends on the game and stuff, but like, like specifically for Valorant because it's a tactical shooter, uh, camping is actually like a healthy part of the game. <laughs> so like, you know, like mm. weirdly enough, it's because it's, you know, tactical sh shooters are about, uh, you know, unlike like stuff like Halo and Call of Duty and stuff yeah. where you kind of just run, see an enemy and then you start shooting at them, shooting each other. And, you know, that's like... Uh, uh, tactical shoulders are more like about like information and positioning right because like because the time time to kill in those games is almost instant instantaneous it's like like literally like a fraction of a second so like um so so you just you just play it play it differently and like you know camping and like like holding your position and being like very silent and not making noise and like uh like 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 you know it's 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 really like like that's what's really important about about the game like that's like the, the most important thing uh and so yeah i would say like you know in t in some games like those kind of like like campy kind of corners and stuff like that it would be like you know a bad thing uh but in, in the case of this game specifically it's, it's sometimes a good thing so it's yeah yeah so, it, it, yeah it just goes to, it goes to show how much like you know like i think it, in design it's just like you got you gotta take everything like as like as what's the project what's needed mm. for the project you know uh they're all like slightly different and like there's no like you know like rule you know rule to rule them all type type Thing yeah, right. it's like, yeah it's it's very unique uh yeah for sure i can imagine mate and i think this is you know building into our kind of our main topic of this episode mate now that you've obviously worked on you know array of different games throughout your career and switching over to to multiplayer right now i guess i'm wondering what have you found to be some of the similarities and the differences when designing for single player or multiplayer mate uh, there's a ton uh, i would mm. say uh you know again it, it's even more granular than that i like, just like you know within you know i worked on multiple single player games and like all of them were different they're all different they all have different goals and stuff like like on halo it was more about like you know like have you know uh, having multiple choices in each combat space where you can so that way when you when you die and respawn you have like you're offered like a different choice instead of like rewinding the vhs as i like to put it you know because if, if you like just to give an example like uh, you know like uh 
uh, if you're fighting in those games and you die, you feel like rewinding a VHS because you're literally just like respawning yeah. before the fight, that, do it, trying it again, dying again, respawn, you know. So, but if if you respawn before that branching point where there's like, oh, I could go up there, I could go down there, like you know, a couple options uh, are available to you, you can go like, oh, this time I'm gonna go for that different approach. You know, you can like change. Dishonored does that really well as well, and like um, just offering options like to the players like for for every combat in every combat space so that's like that was like one of our important thing there but that might not be necessary because i worked on avengers too you know so avengers that's not that this concept yeah. is not really a thing it's more like oh you know uh it's more about how you spawn the enemies and making sure that like the the wave of enemies they, they kind of bleed over each other they kind of overlap a little bit so it feels natural right. like a organic kind of fight you know so every all those projects they all, they all care about different things you know they, they have their own set of priorities basically um, so you need to fulfill it, you know. It's that's that's why, like, I think that even if you're a super experienced designer, like, like, you, you know, like, in, at the end of the day, like, if you join a new project, you get yeah. you get still gonna have to learn. Like, okay, what's what does this project need? You gotta like look at it, like, you know, uh, play the game a lot. Uh, you know, that's one thing that we do uh, a lot uh, on Valorant. That we we're playing every day, dude. We're always playing mm-hmm. the game, and we're we're having a blast you know we're still like got that kind of gamer mentality uh mm. it's really important you know i think that's a, a here's a good rule of thumb for designers like overall it's just like th- think like your users you know like like be yeah. be like be be a gamer just like play the game a lot and like you know think about what where a gamer would would want out of this you know uh yeah no man i think that's a great one and i think that was a really great point you said like the first, and I'll say this, like one of my biggest mistakes when I first started in the industry is that like, each project's different. And the studio will always, hopefully, but most of the time, they'd give you when you start that time to to play what's already there, If you know, depending where you are in the project when you've joined a team, all the key information and documentation, as well as people that you can speak to. And really, like you said, take the time to learn and study that. Because as yeah. you said, once you get into development, you it, it's easy to sadly lose some time play testing when you should be so really taking all that information f- at any point in that first few weeks or months because he said not all of your past projects will be applicable oh, so you just lagged out there oh are we are we back on it oh you're back you're back oh, okay <laughs> <We> can, <laughs> nothing but the best for this mate <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but yeah you will you know, you really need to focus on taking it all in to be able to make the best because not all of the information you had from previous projects is applicable, as you mentioned, mate, to yeah. something that you're new on. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, you, you brought a good point there. Like when you start, especially when you start a project, when you're just joining, now you got, because, you know, the team is like, you, you're, you're like in a designated kind of like ramping up block, kind of like, you know, like, oh, you're ramping up right now, learning the tools and stuff like that play the game dude that's like the perfect moment for it i just play a lot and just like try to like really uh enjoy it the way a, a user would, would you know like a, you know it's really important to put yourself in that in that like perspective so you know what because at the end of the day we're making games for those people you know like, like they're not, yeah. they're not making games for us for what we think is good or whatever it's like we're making we're making it for for that perspective like at the end of the day like the players don't know that like uh all the you know development issues that happen mm-hmm. or whatever like the things that the technicality is they don't they don't care about any of that they just want a good game you know um, yeah yeah exactly mate and that's <laughs> that's so important is like you said they don't care how many times this level has been redesigned or <laughs> sadly a mechanic was meant to be here but due to changes it didn't make it yep. it's about making the best with what yeah. you have <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It is, yeah. At the end of the day, it's just, yeah. That's, that's why it's important to have like that that perspective. Play the game a lot and, and like genuinely enjoy it. And it's kind of, it's kind of surprisingly like how much you'd know, be surprised how much like we have to like uh, like players don't uh, not players developers don't play their game very often. Actually, you yeah. kind of have to like kind of force them like okay, that's here's a block on your schedule that's like dude, now we're all playing the game. You, yeah. It's like mandatory or whatever, uh, you know, or strongly encouraged and. Uh, yeah, so I thought it's a great way to wind down a little bit, you know. For sure, and I think it's like you said, it's also different because when you're play testing your level, right? Like you're playing it through to quickly see if the change you've made or the the design you thought was going to be cool if it does actually work or not. So you might quickly jump in and out, right, over and over. That's not the same as you said, actually playing it as the gamer, mm-hmm. just sitting down and actually playing a match or running through the level as a whole. Yeah. And so, if, yeah, man. 
if it's a single player game, just full playthrough. Like I think mm -hmm. they should like, like more people should be doing do full playthrough. Just just play it from the beginning and like get to your level like as you know in a full playthrough. Like because you know maybe your idea. Of, let's say you're working on level six in the game or something, in like a single player game, right? You're like in the middle of the game or something. Uh, that's not the, you like starting from scratch, like from the start of your level, starting to play there. That's not this exactly how players are gonna experience it. They're more like they're gonna see like what's before it first, and like yeah. it's very important to see. At Lover Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career? Then consider our one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. Also, you gotta look at your 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 other buddies, uh, buddy level designers levels, man. You gotta look, you know make yeah. sure that that's the. Uh, the, if they're doing stuff that's like really interesting, make sure you do it in yours too to keep things consistent. Try to make mm -hmm. it feel like it's a cohesive kind of, uh, in like some way. It's if if you don't, uh, you know, we used to say a thing like, you know, if if you don't think about designers at all, about design when you you're experiencing like a, a specific product, that means it's it's good design. You know, like <laughs> yeah. that means it feels coherent. You know, no, mate, it's a it's a good it's a completely good point on that one, mate. And I love that one you mentioned about like play it but you know play the level before your own level or something just because you said the flow might be different the than how you thought about it maybe the pacing is off because you you didn't think that oh man like they've just finished a giant action sequence and now i'm throwing more enemies at them or maybe you yeah. want to catch their breath so yeah again communication playing through all of that and i was wondering mate because obviously we're, we're trying to deliver stories and even multiplayer games now have you know narrative with characters interactions i think obviously overwatch was a a really kind of big step forward in that yeah. but there's there's obviously others that have laid the groundwork prior to that and i'm just wondering obviously environmental storytelling is a big part but how do you i guess i know it's not as big of a, a priority but i guess how do you still try think about like narratives or the narrative of the the space that you're creating within the level so uh making you know doing the, your homework i would say is really important there like like just like uh so we have these docs obviously just read their docs about the narrative uh, i know it might might be kind of like boring to read some docs but it's really important to, to to do that just to be on top of things like really like okay what's going on there you know what's the, like the the because uh, every level, like even levels in a like tactical shooter like Valorant, like even if there's no like cutscenes or anything, the level still has like a story. You know, it's just like a more of a uh, intrinsic. Uh, I don't know how to explain. You know, it's like in the environment. You know, like uh, there's not gonna be full on like you know a little movie playing or, or anything like that. But it, the story's still there. It's important to 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 read the docs, talk with the writers, like just collaborate collaborate basically with uh, with those people a lot. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like it's definitely lower down the list i would say like like uh, for the priority list for like valorant for instance uh but it's still up there you know it's still like there is a story in every level still um yeah and um yeah that's those are the the, the things that we recommend honestly just yeah collaborate with your your narrative folks yeah man great point again like it is a team effort that make levels obviously we are the level designers but there's so many other incredible minds that go into to making a level oh, yeah, overall absolutely. enjoyable for it. And I want to ask, man, because you've got, as in terms of Valorant and it's for, for other you know, multiplayer games as well, you've obviously got all these incredible abilities that the player has with different characters. How do you go around? Because this is always something that I've been curious about with Valorant, Overwatch, and other games that 
have that have kind abilities. of theme. Yeah, the abilities. Like, how do you best balance out these these abilities when you're designing the level? Uh, so basically, we have like kind of like um, kind of rules of like, oh, this should this should be some place to use this ability pretty much everywhere on the map. Or at least like like often enough that it feels like um, it feels rewarding to play as that character. So for instance, for instance, like one character I like a lot, I play a lot on a on a live game is a uh, uh, breach. And breach has this ability that's like um, actually all of his abilities are based on like going through walls. So you have to use a wall. And he put, kind of punches the wall. He creates like a like an earthquake on the other side of the wall, you know. So that it's really interesting gameplay. So that, but but that in in a way, it's very um, it's pretty easy to design around that because it's just like okay, just like any wall will work for that. Uh, we have characters like Jet that that can like jump. She has like a, a super jump kind of ability. She can like 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 fly with like a dash thing, and then she can climb on on high grounds that only her can get to, and uh, a few characters. So like we have to place a couple of those like in every combat space, you know, just making sure there's like that you know the jet players have some options there. Uh, yeah, we just gotta go down the list basically, make sure like all every character has like some 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 strength uh, in every like kind of every combat space. Uh, sometimes there's just there definitely there's like less options for certain characters, and that was cre- that's what creates like the character meta, you know, like uh, like character cross uh, X like character per map meta, I would say, like you know, cause, like this character is good on this map, this character is not so good on this map, etc. Oh, that's cool, man. I think just uh, tr- figuring that out, it's like when you're first trying to figure out metrics, right? Understanding all of that, I think, is it takes its time. But like once you have that information for that the whole team follows and uses, it can really just you know improve the overall like coherency for it. Man. Yeah. So, no. Yeah, that's absolutely. Great, great one there. And I was going to ask then with with all this. Uh, is there anything else that you think is like different or similar when you're designing these spaces, mate? Uh, are different, like as as opposed to single player stuff. You mean? Yes, yeah, sorry, yes, like, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, for one, like you know, um, in single player, you, you really like you know, there's not a, a variable that that there. Are, like the biggest variable is like that one player because it's like you just have one player to, to worry about but in multiplayer you have to worry about like you no know, multiple players from multiple angles and multiple you know like people it, it's like engagements can play like so so like differently like uh because of that it's like it, it kind of it certainly adds complexity uh but on the on the flip side like you know single players game they have like you know npcs and stuff like that and those can have complexity as uh, can add a lot of complexity we don't have like npcs on Valorant, so uh so you, you, i guess it's like trade-offs but um yeah uh, yeah so basically yeah those are the, the those are some big difference for sure um yeah yeah that's that's yeah those mm. are, that's that's yeah it's it's definitely very uh, uh yeah i forgot where i was going with that Shit. hold on <laughs> no it's all good, it's all good. That's, that's my point but like yeah uh it's it like I, I want to go back to that thing I was saying, like yeah, every game is different and stuff like that for sure. Mm-hmm. But like you know, like single player, you can do literally stuff like oh, uh, here's uh, you hit that trigger and like uh, this thing happens here, like very like choreographed kind of kind of like style level design, like you no know, uncharted and stuff like that, where it's like very scripted, you know, uh, which creates like a like you know it it creates like a, a whole different kind of kind of game, kind of diff- different experience and stuff like that. On multiplayer, you can't really do that so much. Are, are you, one also one big thing is you got you got you got to worry about perf, perf way more, like because like you know there's right. like ten players running around on the same map, like you know, mm-hmm. and uh, you know the game needs to run on like you know like really old computer as well, so be, still run decently well. So um, you got to worry about that too. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's very different for sure. I I, I kind of like don't know where to, to start to, to talk yeah. about that. Like, yeah, it's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's different for sure. No, man, I can imagine. I guess, like, I think one of the similarities slash differences, again, in the approach is obviously, like, line of sight, right? And, again, it, yeah. it applies differently to each game, as we said. For Valorant, obviously, we talked earlier about corners and how camping should be a uh, – something you mentioned should be something that shouldn't be uh... – Yeah, it's almost, like, almost not – it, it's camping is so like normal in those games that's almost not in the vocabulary honestly it's like it's just like positioning like you sometimes you gotta hold hold uh, a position you know and that like, is just totally normal it's so uh totally part of the game uh also there's like bo- uh, uh bullet penetration so like bullets go through walls in this game and like like you know like you gotta think about that as well sometimes you can create like you know 
uh, uh, like a wall bang walls we call them. So it's like it's like a like a, a wall that's made out of wood or something. So like the gameplay is there, there is that you, if you know for a fact that there's a player on the other side, you can shoot through the wall and kill him that way. Um, so like you know that there's like that that sort of like depth that that, that comes in. Uh, but those like are implemented like a, a bit later usually, and uh, yeah, at, at the end of the day, it's just about like you know. When you make a level for for anything like like mm-hmm. whether it's multiplayer or single player, you gotta start at like the you know from like really the the ground up. You know you're like, yeah. like it's like, like for, if, to give you like a, an example, the way I make like every level like like I think ever since like I worked in the in the, in the industry is like I start with a flow chart. It's like a flow chart of events. Like if this happens here, this happens there, this uh, and like I string them up together. And this like later becomes like the layout. Like I don't start with a layout ever. Like like starting with a layout is just like because it it's weird. Like I think I brought that up uh, on our first uh at the, the first time on the on a podcast yeah. when I was here. Uh, it's it's like if you because it's weird to explain, but it's like even though the layout contains what happens at the level, it's it's still like not the most important thing. It's not it's not the first thing you should you should think about the events. The layout is just like a stage for those events to happen. You know the, those chain of events. Um, yeah. So you should, yeah. So the the, like the way I go about things is just like I want this type of, of gameplay here. Let's say like I start like like, like a space on Valorant. I'm like, oh, this one's gonna be like a kind of like a close quarter. I want shotguns to be good on the on this bomb site, for instance. I want like a good shotgun bomb site. So okay, what is that? What are the aspects that are gonna are gonna make this happen? Well, probably it's probably gonna be pretty pretty tight, you know, pretty small kind of, uh, you know, and like a, probably a, a lot of cor- a lot of corners where you can go around. So you can kind of like you know, it's gonna be like pretty geometrically complex so there's a lot of like you know you, you because of that this lines of sight are super short so you can't really snipe sniping is not as good so players are more encouraged to go into the shotgun route or you know for instance like it's probably like there's probably other things that go into it but yeah you know what i mean like you, you basically just like you you define what the aspects uh the aspects are that are necessary to make that type of gameplay happen and then you go for that you build it in in that direction and then you make a layout yeah. that that's that's that goes in that direction uh yeah, yeah. No, man, I think it's, uh, as you said, and you, you did mention it in the last episode, so if you haven't heard that, please go back and listen to our previous episode. But that element of, you know, the everyone obviously wants to jump into the layout, and, and the layout will take, you know, a bunch of iterations as well as construction. You said getting that information onto the page, understanding what is happening in your level, prioritizing, you know, how big each kind of event should be, getting the pacing right for it. As you said, what gameplay is available to you at that time in the in the game and all this information as we talked about you know earlier in this episode read it all consume as much as you can because this will have impact on how you design and what you try and add to your levels as well people yep. so guy do your homeworks yeah man <laughs> <laughs> you think you know finish school you don't have to anymore but it's so true <laughs> so true. yeah i was wondering mate because you've got obviously different styles of uh, levels just in you know all your different career. Is there anything that you can like recommend any books or anything to anyone who's who's listening to this that might like inspire either architecture or just general workflow that you recommend, mate? I mean, uh, you got. Uh, I mean, let's gotta be honest. Like right here, I, I gotta recommend my books from my, my mate right here, Max Bears. Uh, here's your here's your little plug right here. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> well played, brother. Well played. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think they're honestly great, and like, as like, especially like, uh, if you're getting to, you, you, like, you want to get like getting into the industry like from scratch kind of thing, like, uh, stuff like that that just kind of like, you know, you flip through like, here's a little quick tip for you, uh, you know, so like all the rules of thumbs kind of like kind of books like they're they're super awesome. Um, I sold like most of my books now. I'm trying to remember. Uh, there mm. was like back in the day there was Level Up uh, by okay. I can't quite remember who. Uh, so that was a pretty good one. Uh, also, an architectural approach, level design. Those are like the the ones like most people would recommend as well. Um, yeah, I, I'd say usually I just I'm interested by anything design. And here's here's a recommendation yeah. to make it to make it a bit different there. Like, um, just like when I I I tend to gravitate towards just anything design in general. When I, I hear mm-hmm. like any like presentation like TED Talk or whatever or like GDC talk about anything design related. Really, I, I I learned so much from it. It's not just level design, you know. Level design yep. is kind of like sometimes too small of a scope. You gotta be, go bigger because, like, um, yeah, you got these great minds that are just like let's say game designers and stuff like that, and like the, or engineers and artists and uh, just hearing them talk about their craft and their and their approach is like, you, you know, there's design in there, and uh, yeah. 
that can apply. I think like the, you know, the, the designer kind of mindset like applies to like so many fields and like, not just to like level design. You can watch like, you know, you can, I can watch like some uh, architectural, uh, you know, see like an architect talking about architect stuff sometimes. I'm like, oh, that's super interesting. Or like a, a painter or something. And like, you know, just like any like great minds uh, like that are, uh, can can be like an, a great designer, so that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Sometimes, like just kind of look at the other fields as well. Uh, yeah. No, mate, that's a great one. I think uh, there's a couple because it's it's funny you said that because I've been going on a bit of a binge. There's an artist called uh, Daniel Arsham, and what he does is he's been trying to like take everyday uh, objects, whether that be like a teddy bear or a basketball, and then he like remakes them out of certain uh, stones and materials, and then kind of like crystallizes them. And just listen, oh. and he did it to a Porsche as well, which was <laughs> very interesting. But it's just such a, a different design. Like you said, there's design behind this, right? There's some different thought about this. Like yeah. watching people talk about uh, camera lenses or cinematography, I think is incredible too. I'm always like, what Absolutely. is this? So yeah, there's always stuff there. So I, I will say thank you for recommending my books. I really appreciate that, mate. But if you do <laughs> want to uh, like open your mind to that, there is a great book called The Design of Everyday Things, which talks about stuff oh, yes. from kettles to door handles. Honestly, the, the door handle point is such a, a great point. And then you realize how many people mess that up. Mm-hmm. What should be clearer and how you push or pull, like the interaction is very unclear yeah <laughs> and you, you know you have affordances and stuff and mm-hmm. yeah exactly yeah so yeah if you are looking for more stuff uh, on that because i think you, right, it is a great point first check out design of everyday things and yeah do your research what other hobbies do you enjoy find out the design of maybe things there that can just again you can take in, into your your work in different directions yeah because at the end at the end of the day design is just like you know thinking things through like like thinking like having like a plan before executing right it's like Mm. it's like building things with a purpose that's what design is right so that that applies to every field honestly so there you go that's the biggest tip i can think i I can give in that direction (laughs) no mate i think that's a great point and it's a great one and with that we're gonna wrap this one up so do just thank you again do check out all of what Mike said and just thank you for for being here, buddy. Really appreciate you coming uh, yeah. back, man. Yeah, thanks for hanging me, man. It's a, it's a blast. Uh, yeah, I always, always enjoy a good conversation, man. Yeah, brother, absolutely. As always. And if people want to get in contact with you, where can they do so, mate? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at just uh, Mike Gontier. So uh, G-O-N-T-H-I-E-R. Um, and that's it. I'm Mike Gontier everywhere. No no, mm-hmm. no weird names or anything. And uh, <laughs> uh yeah, my, my website is mikegontier.com. Um, yeah, super straightforward there. Awesome. I'll have a link to all of that in the description below if you want to go check it out and get in contact with Mike as well. So we'll wrap this one up. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so on Twitter as well, which is at Max Pez. If you want to email any questions to the podcast, you can do so at leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. And if you want to support the show, please head over to patreon.com forward slash leveldesignlobby. Thank you all for listening. We hope you have a great day, evening, or night. Take care, and we'll catch you all next time.